like to welcome those who are online, joining us online right now. Can't see us right now, I'll change the scene in a moment. But also those who are here today uh, in St. Anne's Church, just a warm, warm welcome. It's nice to see bodies in the church instead of just looking at a camera uh, for three months. So it's nice to see your faces. And I know you're smiling behind it. If not, <laughs> you're sticking your tongue out and that's okay. <laughs> you got to breathe your own air. <laughs> so a warm welcome to you. I'll just change the scene so that we can uh, have this live thing. And I'd like to invite Alicia forward. So good morning, sorry, Father Mike. Good. good morning, everyone, um, and also welcome to anyone who is tuning in virtually. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to our year-end liturgy. As we know, the end of the school year means different things to each of us, and what a school year that it has been. Some of us will be moving on to new places, others to new responsibilities. So whether summer finds us working, resting, playing or studying, in many ways, it is a signal of the end of one season and the emergence of something new. Let us take the next few minutes to reflect on the blessings of this school year, to give thanks and to invite our gracious God to continue with us as we journey forth through the changes that summer will bring. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we enter into this liturgy of hope, of faith, of thanksgiving for this year, and also thanksgiving for the weirdness because we got to give thanks in all situations and so as we do we open our hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Lord to come to us in this moment and give us strength and courage let us pray Lord God our Father as we ponder the blessings and challenges of this past year Grant us the serenity of your Holy Spirit and openness of heart to the wonders that you have done in us and will continue to do in faithfulness to us, your children. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we have our reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me. Jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people I formed for myself that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we live by faith, 
Every ending is the beginning of something new. Everything points beyond itself to a presence without and within. Every person becomes sacrament. Every colleague, a companion on life's pilgrimage. When we live by faith, time becomes a gift and seasons rivers of grace, refining and recreating us to fullness of life. See, God is doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Your work is an icon of God's tireless labors to build up what is just, to strengthen the faltering spirit, to fire the imagination with endless possibilities for learning, for growing, for becoming, for being in love. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After feeding the crowd, Jesus withdrew to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea and got into the boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind that was blowing. When they had rowed about five or six kilometers, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going, and the storm ceased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I really am so grateful that you're here, and to those who have joined us online, I'm grateful to the uh, St. Anne's School community, and uh, I just want you to know that that we are praying for you. We were praying for your families. We were praying for the school community. These are indeed strange, strange times. Uh, Please, if there, I, I think this live stream is for the teachers, is it, and the staff, is it? Yes, no, is it for the whole school community? Okay, all right, we got head nods. (laughs) Okay, so I also want to offer congratulations to the graduates who may be joining us today. Uh, uh, Phenomenal, and uh, just know that uh, we're really encouraging you, and uh, it's a hard time to graduate uh, cyberly, but... uh, Uh, Blessed be God that you have graduated, and we want to offer our sincerest congratulations to you and your families. You know, managing change, we all love change, right? We all totally love change. It's so much fun. Yeah, like pulling your hair out or poking your eyes out or smashing your head with a stick. It's just, we don't like it. We don't like change at all. And it's hard to navigate. And even when this, this whole thing has come out, Uh, It's been very difficult for many, many, many people. It has been, uh, I know this isn't a word, but it's okay, discombobulating. It really has. Or um, there's a disequilibrium that's happening. That it's so hard to navigate. Everything's changed. No sports, no gatherings in 
Well, you're probably happy about the not having to sit in a cold arena, but you know, all these things that we were so dependent on and it was so much part of the rhythm of life and so many busyness and, and lots and lots of busyness, going to the store, going here, going there, planning a vacation, all of these kinds of things that are, are what, how we're built to be in communion, to be in community. And it seems as though all of it's ripped apart. And then what's presented to us on a crisis news network called CNN, um, what's presented to us in the media is fear, 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 fear. Here, take another feeding of fear. Would you like another portion of fear? How about we just throw out some ambu am ambiguity and fear at the same time? You like the meal? Here, we'll give you some more, we'll give you some more. And filling our minds and our hearts with this, it, it's overwhelming. It really is overwhelming. However, I think that the Lord is doing, as we heard in the first reading, a new thing. He didn't cause this. But the Lord can transform anything into good if we give him permission to do so. That's the heart of it. That the Lord can with us do a reset. And if we allow him to do that, we start sorting out what's important and what's not. Because when things are taken away from us, we have to sort out what's important and what's not. And what we thought was important maybe isn't as important. And what we hunger along for is probably where we need to go. That hungering and longing for the Lord. I shared at the graduation at uh, Monsignor Morrison and also Assumption School that this image of Jesus walking on water in the midst of the storm and getting into the boat and bringing calm. This is the whole thing is that when we're tossed and turned and thrown on different waves and, and unable to get a, a sense of ourselves, and I don't know if you've ever been on a boat that's tossing and turning and, and flipping all over the place. It's like... It's just not good. One thing that is very, very helpful in the midst of that tossing and turning is if we have a focal point... When we look at a focal point, even though everything's undulating, we can get a sense of balance. And the only true point that never changes, says in St. Paul to the Romans, Christ yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, in the midst of everything, does not change. He is the changeless one. He's the one for whom we are able to focus and keep our focus on. So no matter what life throws at us, he's always there. He's there to calm the storm. Did you notice what he said when he got into the boat? Do not be afraid. He wasn't scolding them as much as he was recognizing that they were terrified. He saw that. So Jesus sees that in all of us. The anxiety, the fears, the wonderment. He sees that directly in our hearts and in our minds, in our families, in, in our jobs, in, 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 in everything that we are and everything that we... He sees us and he speaks to it. Do not be afraid. Why should we not be afraid? Because of Jesus, because of him, because he has conquered sin and death. He has conquered it all. And so when we're in the midst of this reset, and especially this summer season, I invite all of us, students, staff, parents, guardians, the community, to look for how God is doing something new. The church has to 
look at itself and say, listen, we got to do a reset. And that's what we're doing. We're doing the hard work of a reset. Good. Praise be Jesus who lives and reigns. Good. We need to do that. We all need to do that. So that as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, in the scriptures, it says 365 times, do not be afraid. One for each day. So hear Jesus say to you, Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I will give you rest. Thank you for your commitment to Christ. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Please stand as we offer our prayers and petitions. Today's response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that all people who follow Jesus will grow in love for the truth of his gospel and honor one another as members of his body. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the world, that the Holy Spirit's peace will fall in new and powerful ways upon the hearts of everyone. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who suffer in our families, our communities, and in our world, for their comfort and for their generosity to help them in their needs. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our bishop, priests, school staffs, our families, and all who have helped us learn and grow in the light of faith, that God will bless them abundantly for their kindness, friendship, and work for us this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the gifts of faith, friendship, learning, play, and love in our Catholic school this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for students and staff moving to new places in the coming year. In thanksgiving for all they have given us and for God's blessings on them wherever they go. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's blessing this summer that God will give all of us in our parish, home, school, community, a safe, happy, and restful life. Great. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for calling us to serve this Catholic school community. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may the seeds of the gospel you have planted in our hearts and called us to water in our school continue to grow. Grant us a peaceful and restful summer that we might be ready to respond with joy to your ongoing call to serve one another in Christ whom, in whom, you make all things new. We make this prayer to you, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord let his face shine upon you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. May Almighty God bless you and your families from generation to generation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Are there any other announcements from anybody? There's shaking of heads, no. Okay, because we're a Catholic gathering, I will have an announcement, <laughs> just because that's the way it goes. Um, thank you so much for joining us together. Uh, it, it's so wonderful uh, to have you with us. Uh, just to let you know that two of our five churches are open now uh, through the hard work of our uh, team. And uh, thank you to the volunteers who have come here to help out. We're going to be doing some cleansing afterwards. Uh, so not only of our souls, but also of the pews. Um, but also, if you're interested uh, and you are at the point that you'd like to return to church, we do have a registration process, so you can just go online and uh, register or call into the office. But all of you are on the interweb because, you know, you have to be. It's part of the job. Uh, so thank you so much for your presence here. And again, just know that we're praying for you and continue to pray that we'll be able to not only open up two of our churches, but all of our churches so our faithful can return to uh, the Holy Eucharist and know that we're praying for you this summer. God bless you and uh, thanks very much. Okay, you can just wait until the ushers bring you. They'll they'll help you exit. <laughs>